Okay, so this is the last panel. Obviously, the, the stragglers are still here. Um, yeah, I'm Bernard Boone. I'm a co-founder of Spark Labs, and I'm filling in again because we've had some uh, scheduling difficulties and flights canceled uh, from abroad. But um, I'll let the John and Albert introduce themselves. So, John, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, uh, I'm John. Uh, I'm currently a venture partner at uh, BlueScare. We are a digital asset management company uh, that helps uh, you know, projects to uh, design tokenomics, to raise funds, and sort of restructure their projects. Uh, but uh, on the side, I am actually building as a builder as well. So I'm building a blockchain project that's still uh, sort of in a stealth mode uh, called the Raver. So we are trying to create a hyper-local metaverse around uh, offline music fans. So I think I'll talk to you guys a bit more about that later. Thanks. All right. Albert? Hi, my name's Albert from DoubleMe. Uh, DoubleMe, we've been working on uh, volumetric video capture technology based on computer vision and 3D graphics. And about two years ago, we, we launched a service called Twin World, which we uniquely positioned as a real world metaverse. So as you know, like metaverse is so, like usually uh, stuck inside of the computer screen and leveraging mixed reality te technology, we're bringing the metaverse into the real world. So, and then we're starting to having like user growth and everything. So hopefully, you know, we can start integrating this web free technologies so that we can create some uh, new type of uh, crypto economies based on that. Yeah, and then Albert definitely is one of our uh, shining stars that we invested in. We invested in Albert back in, oh my gosh, when was it? 2015. <laughs> we were, wait, we were, Jimmy, I think Jimmy found you. Uh, Eugene. Oh, Eugene. Eugene found, found us. Super early in the metaverse. Think about this, right. 2015, he definitely grinded it out, and then he was rewarded this past year where uh, Samsung led a, a $25 million Series A. So he, he was super early, and I just like, you know, kudos to Albert for sticking it through. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, why don't we start off by, you know, just framing the conversation in terms of how would you define the metaverse? Why don't you start, Albert? I mean, as you all, you, as you all know, the metaverse is the, you know, combination between meta and universe. And uh, a lot of people think metaverse as a, like, kind of 3D visualization and immersive experiences. For us, especially in our company, anything, any uh, like virtual space, when I say virtual, it doesn't have to be 3D space, but anything, any kind of digital space that allow users to consume story, and we define it as a metaverse right now. So not only 3D immersive experiences, why not tactile experiences or audio, audio or audible experiences and uh, oral experiences and any type of story consumption space and we call it as a metaverse. John, how would you define it? So um, I think um, along the lines of what Albert was saying, um, we sort of look at metaverse as where uh, you'll have to have an, a specific identity and also a specific social network that's present to it and a space. Uh, and it, this can be you know, either digital or non-digital to an extent, I think. Um, and, and we are talking about uh, more of a digital world where uh, you know, whether, whether, like he said, it's a 3D or whether it's your mobile phone. I think um, when you look at you know, your cacaos or your, any of your social networks, I think you are already in the metaverse. You know, your digital identity is sometimes more important than your actual identity in reality. So. Having said that, you know, what we are doing right now is uh, trying to sort of replicate your offline identity of your taste and preference, especially music, and trying to replicate that on a uh, digital world. Yeah. So related to this, like, what do you think are the core technologies driving the metaverse? Or actually, what's even missing, you think, that needs to be developed? And it's okay to pump up your own company. So. So, I mean, t traditional like textbook de definition of metaverse, you need to have a, something like uh, four, uh, uh, the 
the stuff that you, you are comp composing the metaverse, which the first one should be the open world. It doesn't have to be story based, but you know, it's an immense uh, 3D or any, any type of digital space that user can roam around. And the second might be the sandbox. So anyone allowed uh, the, the service or the platform should allow users to contribute the, their own content creation. And also, we need to have an avatar. But the, you know, when I say avatar, as I, I, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to be 3D representation. It could be any type of digital representation of you should be avatar. Then lastly, and this is something that you know, us and other metaverse companies starting to integrate into the meta, like what we call metaverse, is the digital economies. So back then, with the gaming and you know, all these the point system and then gaming, uh, the earning system, it's already there, but now with the, the company's own currencies or the uh, alliances' currencies, that now we're literally having the, it's, it's not fiat yet, but the, the token economy kicks in so that the content creator can earn, uh, the, uh, earn actual values out of the service. So these four, uh, the components supposed to be there inside of the metaverse. So, you know, it doesn't have to be 3D, but anything related to these four components, then, you know, we should call metaverse. And then that, that's the, the main ingredient, we think. John? Yeah. I think in terms of uh, sort of a content creation is where uh, we, we are trying to really focus on making that really, really easy for each users to do it. So, uh, to give you an example, what the platform we are building right now is that if you come to a Spark Labs event, what will happen is that on your app, you will have an NFT collectible that represents a Spark Labs event, let's say like Spark Labs logo, and you can claim that on your land almost automatically. So what happens is that you go to different uh, places, locations, venues that you love, and that's what really sort of defines you, who you are uh, in the offline space as well, but you know, in the digital space as well. So uh, you really don't have to know anything about you know, like voxel arts or you know, creating or on d using digital tools, whatever. Uh, so this is where I think a lot of the, uh, at least the you know, current uh, Web3 Metaverse players are sort of missing. So we're trying to uh, fill that gap. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Even like, I remember early on, I mean, this is like so long, like five, six years ago, my oldest daughters are 13. Right? I remember when they were like eight, right? They're doing the Google goggles, right? And they actually loved it. That's when I realized, oh, you know, VR, AR, like, but there wasn't enough content, right? Because it only came with like, whatever, 10 really, you know, decent games. And so even though they loved it, they got so bored. Right after all, because it just wasn't enough. So, as the tech is developing, right, and you obviously identify the content issue, what other sort of factors do you think are missing in terms of to make it really a success or a leap forward? Right, what are the business factors, or you could even go deeper on the issue of the content side, and like what what else is missing? You think to make it a reality? Uh, I think uh, you know a lot of the focus has been on pure games to this day. Just, I mean, everything uh, that I think I've seen in the Web3 Metaverse is game, 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 right? I think, uh, I think we have, I mean, don't get me wrong, but I love games. Uh, I think we have enough gaming contents, and I think enough people building games, wondrous uh, you know, game studios here, game publishers here in Korea as well. But I think we have to go beyond games. You know, we have to be more. Uh, you know, whether it's social, whether it's more. You know, entertainment oriented. Just like the you know sessions we had before. You know, all those kinds of media contents has to be uh, represented on the metaverse in a very, very specific and different way that caters to the specific contents. And I think that's going to be our next big thing that we will have to focus on. Whether it's music, movies, or you know any other formats. Yeah. I, I think there's still the content creation. You know, as you mentioned, Bernard, uh, the, there are not enough content. Why? Anything related 3D, it's really difficult to generate by regular people. So, uh, you know, before we launch our service, and we've been focusing on uh, easy to use, uh, easy to uh, use, and simple and real time uh, 3D content generation. That's how we, you know, we 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 got. Uh, got into the uh, Spark Labs uh, accelerator at the beginning. So 
I think that those kind of like easy to use type of like, you know, all, if you compare with the old online video, it should be like webcam technology is supposed to be there instead of like we're hiring Hollywood uh, movie crews to generate like nice content. So once you have a, you know, simple, simple, easy to use and really cheap technology, then the metaverse, you know, we can, like users can definitely contribute lots of contents because you know, now that I see, like, you know, the online video is not only for documentaries or educational contents, but it's also for mukbang, right? So, and, like, you know, silly contents like that is everywhere, and then people starting to watch it. So, to me, it feels like, you know, early days of Metaverse or the growth of the Metaverse, we need not only quality contents, but quantities. That's definitely missing. Okay. Um Sort of changing gears a bit, what is the coolest sort of um, innovations or startups that you've seen in the metaverse? And actually, I'll start, because I recently visited our, our partner at uh, Arizona State University, so we have an accelerator there. And the head of the university, he took me to their new immersive uh, technology center. And basically, it was a huge VR studio where you have this like full on like, you know, I'm sure you've seen it, like full on arms and uh, like shoes and it's like, like playable. It, it was, no, but it was amazing because you were deep in the ocean and you literally felt like you were in the ocean and seeing like a giant sort of whale pass by. And the experience was pretty amazing. Right? So that's the coolest thing I've seen so far. Right? And now they just launched, uh, what do you call? You could buy tickets to this experience in LA, in certain in certain uh, centers. I mean, um, I don't know whether Arbut is going to mention that his company is the one, but uh, some of the coolest stuff that I've seen in the past uh, year or so, uh, what uh, Albert has been creating, Double Me, and I think, uh, I mean, he sort of showed uh, you know how it works, uh, and he demoed it to me. It was really amazing because. Uh, Really, really, it really makes the 3D creation of anything super easy. Like you can do that in like just minutes. And also, uh, I think Albert, you can talk about you know how you uh, redefine real estate as well and the space. Yeah. I mean, th that's something that we're we're working really hard <laughs> to make the real world metaverse re uh, directly beneficial for the real uh, real estate owner, the physical space owner. That's something that we're working on. Besides, besides what we we're doing. I've seen, you know, amazing development is coming from the, you know, company called Niantic. So Niantic, as you know, they're, they're the creator of the Pokemon Go. Yeah. And then after Pokemon Go, they actually launched like three other amazing projects, which you all don't know about. <laughs> every, every single of those later projects uh, were failed. <laughs> so yeah. nobody knows that. But, the, you know, they've been accumulating this amazing technology and now, they're opening up to the companies like you know us, like who's creating platform and content, and uh, you know their experiences globally. It's it's really beneficial for the developers out there, like in, including us. So these uh, Niantic's endeavor is absolutely amazing for us. Yeah. So I think the the general population when they hear metaverse or they hear it associated with like Facebook and Zuckerberg, right? So they think, oh. It's another way to chat, right? Or they think, oh, it's another social. But, you know, you mentioned real estate. I mean, what other sort of industries and verticals do you think the metaverse could benefit, enhance, or disrupt? I'm definitely seeing the education. So education, we, we, we've been trying with a bunch of schools around uh, in Korea, and then kids nowadays, you know, they're actually playing this Roblox every day, every single day when, they ho when they're home. And they are so uh, accustomed to uh, creating avatars and interacting avatar as, as if it's their real friends. So the educational field definitely is one of the biggest field that you know, Metaverse company can innovate. Uh, I think another is like healthcare. Uh, I think there's been a lot of tries in, you know, sort of digitizing, you know, healthcare services and everything. But uh, with all that, you know, uh, you know, devices like Oculus, uh, 
upgrading. I see that you know uh, it becomes a reality that you know where you are sitting in a one place and you are speaking to a doctor like across the ocean kind of thing, and that I think opens up a much broader sort of a range of uh, you know medical services to uh, you know much wider uh, patients as well at a much lower cost. So I think that's some uh, area that I'm really interested in you know growing, uh, looking at it growing. Yeah. Well, since I mentioned Facebook, uh, do you have any uh, criticisms of uh, Facebook's approach in the whole metaverse? Right, Because a lot of at least public shareholders and investors, they just slam Facebook right now. They spent, what was it last quarter? Something like 12, 6 billion or something like that, right? 6 billion. <laughs> like, and then they're, they're like, it didn't go anywhere. I don't know, what do, you, what do you think of Facebook's approach? Or if you were Zuckerberg, what would you change? I'm definitely rooting for whatever Facebook does right nowadays, and and you know since beginning of the, you know purchasing the Oculus, and it it's a it's a new medium, and many of you guys you know you may probably like half of the pe people here might even you know try like this headset devices, so it probably take a little bit more uh, time, and then we're seeing the my, uh, Apple. It's coming with the new uh, glasses uh, next year. So hopefully, you know, like cool companies like Apple will initially take this market by themselves, and then you know others will definitely follow that. But you know, I don't have any criticism. But uh, definitely, they're they're you know we're, we're one of the uh, the ecosystem developer with, with Facebook. Hopefully, you know they can they can be the like, you know, shining beacons for all those metaverse companies. John? I think um, Facebook really needs to open up more uh, in a sense that, uh, you know, I, if they, they could have spent those $6 billion in, you know, actually uh, building better SDKs and APIs for, you know, developers to work on, I think that would have been much better than trying to add, a, I think it was a leg to an avatar, right? So, I mean, so <laughs> It's an interesting approach, but uh, I, I think what Facebook really at a core is about connecting people, and uh, I think if they could, uh, you know, excel in connecting actual builders and developers uh, to work together towards uh, metaverse, I think that's uh, going to be much more efficient. I believe. You know. I agree. I, I like your points. Um, in terms of this uh, upcoming year, like what sort of trends do you see? Because I think it is not just because of Facebook, but overall, we do see, as a firm, Spark Labs, we see definitely more innovation back into AR and VR, right? Because, wait, it's this COVID time where I can't, I think, actually, it might have been, Albert even might have been early than the first wave, but at least 2016, maybe, maybe it was 15, 16, even throughout Silicon Valley, there must have been like 100 VR, AR startups that eventually like died. Right? And then there are a lot of dead bodies. Double Me is one of them that survived. Oculus and some of these others, right? But what, what are some of the, you think, the trends are, you know, within the space that you'll see in this coming year? Uh, I cannot say anything about other companies, but, you know, at least for Double Me, we're starting to tightly integrating this blockchain uh, back end, uh, and we're even, you know, planning to launch our mainnet. <laughs> so hopefully, and, and, and we, we can create some type of like platform for third party content creator or service creators so that they can flourish inside of our, our platform. And then now, you know, we recently starting to work with the smaller AR VR company who wants to use our technologies, and this individual company has amazing ideas based on our technology. So, uh, you will starting to see like you know crazy, crazy stuffs uh, using AR VR uh, technology, and then integrating with the token economy, so that the con content creators receiving some benefits, and also these companies will you know create a larger user basis. Just don't create the Terra of Double Me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're the platform <laughs> provider, so, but although we have some type of policies, but I, I, as, you, as you mentioned, we, you know, we, we already you know, have some contact with the you know, companies like 
porn companies here and there yeah. trying to use our technology. Because one of our technology is you know, we're allowing our users to instantly generating in real time uh, full 3D scan, live 3D scan, which you know, create a, creating a live hologram broadcasting. It's so, okay. That's, <laughs> that, that side is okay. <laughs> porn is safer than stable coins. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no, no stable coins for us. <laughs> John, any, the trends you'll see coming here? Uh, I, I think uh, you know, we might be seeing a new kind of uh, social media or social network services that are dedicated to the, you know, these AR and VR systems that might not be meta. You know, and I, I'm really rooting for you know, whoever is building that. And I think uh, that, that needs to be built by people who are native to the, I think, the hardware as well. You know, not not you know somebody who is trying to replicate Facebook onto the AR VR hardware or so the systems. Um, so you know, I know a couple of startups that are that have already started on that journey, but there's a long way to go. But I'm seriously rooting for them to you know like take over the next uh, you know Snap or the Meta or you know. Okay, I like both your answers. Uh, why don't we open up the audience for any questions? Any questions for the speakers? Okay, first. Go, Prince, and then back there. Well, considering the metaverse should be. Considering the metaverse, oh, sorry. Considering the metaverse should be built in um, great collaboration with other companies, and the lack of interoperability and intertextuality that you see in every project that comes out, do you think it would be? Do you think there should be greater push on a kind of 3D design standard or 3D coding standard that would make it easier for companies to actually work together rather than choosing between like Unity or Unreal? Or, yeah. I mean, technology standards are already there, out there, you know, believe it or not. In this web, uh, uh, W3, uh, the organization, as well as IC, uh, I, I mean, uh, the uh, ISO and you know all this I I IETF, and these guys have been working on you know creating the standardized three D formats, which is you know already out there. Like between uh, all these three D tools, you can easily uh, convert one one form to another form. The problem is the policies. You know every single company has a different policies, and then you know including like small companies, really tiny company like us, we want to create our own playground, you know. And uh, I think, you know, one or, one or two companies has to be really big, like Apple, maybe Meta, and then when they start to create a, like some type of standardized format, I, when I say format, it's more, more policies than the technology format. So once that is done, then, you know, others will gradually uh, gravitated to toward to the some of the larger body, and that will be the you know natural uh, standardization. I don't think you know you can you can push uh, standardized standardized policies to the smaller companies or individual companies. But you know we're the industries are the industry the people are definitely working on that. Right. I mean uh, I. I mean, I think uh, what uh, Albert mentioned uh, covers like pretty much everything. But uh, to me, I think I'm sort of uh, more interested in uh, how uh, generative tech or generative AI can add uh, value to the, especially you know, 3D modeling or making the entire process easier for people to uh, establish a really, really sort of effective and efficient human to machine sort of partnership kind of thing. So I think a lot of the you know hard work that goes into 3D modeling are very laborsome. So uh, if we can automate that process using an AI model, I think that'd be really nice, really cool, actually, yeah. Hi there, I'm Brylan Wadley. Um, my question is, as metaverses develop and we start to see more mass adoption, do you think we'll stay more in the grounds of reality or more in the future scape uh, and, and hyper-reality? Because why would I want to drive uh, a Mercedes in the hype, or in the metaverse instead of like ride a dragon, right? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, as a as a company, it's <laughs> focusing on the what we call real world metaverse, and uh, we're definitely seeing the larger value 
if the metaverse, or if, if you want to call it as a like multiverse or a parallel universe, exists on, on, on top of the real world, definitely has a larger value. And that, that's uh, exactly the same idea as uh, you know, what Apple is directly aiming for, which is AR, right? So I think the real world has a larger value because not only it pleases the, the user who wants to experience amazing things, but also if you tie up with the, that parallel universe or digital parallel universe directly to the like, local businesses, then you know, it will create a larger business opportunities for everyone. Uh, just adding to that, I think, uh, I, I mean, I'll be very blunt about this. I think uh, wherever the most uh, money is, wherever the money is, I think uh, that's where you know, people are going to spend more money. So if you are making more money on the digital space, people are going to be spending more money on the digital space, right? And we already see that happening uh, with, you know, PAYCs and, uh, you know, crypto punks and, I mean, you know, why are they spending millions of dollars literally, you know, like buying this kind of, you know, PFPs with no utility at all, right? And I think um, that is uh, going to accelerate with the better, uh, I think, 3D models and, uh, you know, 3D devices, uh, so yeah, I'm, yeah. Hopefully, like I'll be seeing, you know, uh, more expensive, uh, you know, 3D Ferraris uh, in the near future. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will add comment though. Crypto punks and stuff. Like, half the NFTs of last year were money laundering, right? So you have to discount that, right? And another third was I call crypto insiders helping themselves out, right? <laughs> So then the, the, the real ones are like the last like 10, 20%, which I think will grow. So I believe long term, I think like all the shady stuff hopefully would pass, right? Including stable coins, right? <laughs> um, anyways, any uh, last questions? Anyone? I think you're definitely right on that. Uh, you know, companies like Roblox, Minecraft, it's a, it has a vast opportunities and possibility that you know, anyone can go there and then creating a bunch of stuff. But usually kids inside of the uh, Minecraft, Roblox, they're usually spending time for having like, you know, gaming experiences. So I've been hearing so many people talking to me uh, like the metaverse and you know they want us to do something about it and then usually this type of virtual very open metaverse which already geared toward to the gaming experiences it's really difficult to reuse that technology into different uh, industries or genre of the businesses and then even for us like we we studied as a like general uh, real world metaverse and then having mixed reality ex experiences uh, by cre created by our users. Initially, we thought you know, it, it could be a really fun place for our users to creating and sharing that experiences. Now we're, like you mentioned, we're starting to see surge of like, third party developers want to work with us and then want, they want to focus on very fiercely focus on the specific industry and specific use cases. I think in, in, in sooner or later, you will start to see, like you, know, like you mentioned, Las Vegas, like you know, casino experiences, or dating experiences, or music experiences. 
even so, it, it's not going to be just one like music experiences having everything. It's going to be like smaller, granular metaverses popping up everywhere. And then, as a as a platform provider, we want to become the you know like seeding technology providers for everyone, so that they can flourish on top of our metaverse. But definitely, there are more like very specifically focusing uh, small, tiny uh, like niche, niche of the market, and that that's the you know the industry uh, how industry is moving slowly. Um, I think. Um a lot of the metaverses that, especially on the Web3 side, uh, you know, you just mentioned Decentraland and Sandbox, um, the, their focus was so much on the price of the tokens or the price of the land and not actually creating the metaverse itself. And that in itself was a big problem uh, during the summer as well. I think um, I've heard that, you know, with Decentraland's valuation, there are only like three people logging on to Decentraland per day, which is insane. Uh, and uh, I think it all boils down to, uh, do we have a uh, contents that we uh, a community can sort of relate to or community can co-create with, and you know, and I think uh, creating that community-driven sort of a content-based uh, network is really really important in any any metaverse, uh, whether it's open metaverse or private metaverse. Uh, having that killer contents is going to be uh, the differentiating factor that is going to grow the community that comes back to the metaverse constantly. Yeah. Great. Well, I think it was an excellent discussion. No, I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Albert and John. And uh, why don't we give a, a hand to the speakers? So, I guess uh, this concludes today, and hopefully you'll be able to join us for our main event tomorrow, the demo day tomorrow at 1 at the COEX. And uh, well, yeah, why don't you stick around, talk to speakers and each other. So great. And thanks Thank again, so John, for Thank you. hosting.